Hello, everyone. We are going to now tackle the obstacle commonly known as a CMA. Um, a CMA is vitally important whether you are working on a listing. A lot of people don't realize they should be doing CMAs for their buyers as well, uh, especially in this market where people are somewhat having to go over list price. CMA is something that needs to be mastered. Um, you're going to have to learn how to do a CMA. A couple of things about a CMA. A CMA is not the exact value. You as a licensee should be conditioned not to give exact values. Give a range. Appraisers give the exact value, their opinion of value on that one day. You are not trained in that aspect. You should be looking at giving them a range, things that is sell from X amount to X amount. It makes your job easier. Now, does that mean the consumer is going to take right in the middle? Probably not. But the fact is, you need to give yourself a range so you can cover yourself better. Uh, and what I'm going to do is show you how to do the basics as far as the CMA. Uh, the number one question I get is, Doing a CMA, how come I can't just say that an extra bath is worth X amount of dollars? And you're going to have to do some study. And there's not a quick fix as far as clicking a magic button and it just automatically loads the correct information. You are going to have to do a little bit of research to find out what properties are selling for in a certain subdivision in a certain school district. And you're going to have to see what those amenities either add or subtract as far as value. So there's not ever going to be a magic button that you can go ahead and put that this double garage is going to be worth X amount of dollars. Um, you're not going to be able to say that uh, an extra bath is worth this, anything like that. It's not going to happen. Uh, CMAs, everybody wants the quick one where you can just click, click, boom, and it comes up with a value. Well, if that was that easy, then uh, they wouldn't need us. So you're going to have to learn how to use a CMA, use it to your advantage, but also use it as um, one of the tools that you have to make yourself the expert. Uh, if there's a quick button that they can click, click, boom, they're not going to need us. They're going to be selling all their homes by themselves. So with that, we're going to jump right into getting a CMA. Um, when you are working a CMA, I'm going to assume that you have gone through your preference wizard and the CMA preferences, it's imperative that you go ahead and go through and set up all your preferences in a CMA. The time to do it is not 15 minutes before your CMA is due when you're meeting either a buyer or seller. That's not the time to do it. Take the time, go through your preference wizard and fill out all the questions that can be adjusted when you're creating the CMA. But make sure you go through your preference wizard and you may and uh, you have uh, filled out everything that you need to on that. So I'm going to assume that you've done that. I'm going to use the assumption that I am showing a buyer. I have shown them a house and they want to know what a CMA is going to look like on this. Now, again, I'm going to disappoint a lot of people by not doing an exact CMA. There's no way that I can do an exact CMA because I've not walked through these properties. I don't have x-ray vision. I cannot look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you and pick some properties and I may arbitrarily inflate or deflate just so somebody doesn't think this is how you get an exact figure. You're going to have to have practice. Uh, you're going to, it's going to be trial and error. Uh, and I would recommend that you start on your own property. Do a CMA on your house, find a listing in your company and do a CMA on that and see if you can practice that way because um, this is something that is learned. It's not an acquired, I mean, you just don't, you're not born with a CMA gene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the easy steps in getting a CMA, letting Paragon create the wizard and you walk through and just fill in the information. So with that, let's jump on this uh, CMA. I am going to do a CMA on a certain property. My buyer has expressed interest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get in front of Paragon and I'm going to go here under the CMA button. When I click here, you're going to see that it's going to give you a couple of options. You can create a presentation, which is what we're going to do today. 
if you don't create a presentation, you will, once you have created one, it will save automatically and you'll be able to go in and reference. So if I do a CMA uh, today and then for 60 days, they decide not to act on it, then they call me up. I can go in under the save presentation, click on it and revamp if I have to choose different comps, adjust the values, so forth and so on. And it's something that you might want to look at now because the market is starting to normalize. Whenever the market shifts, just always go in and change. If, if it's been over 30 days, make sure your comps are still uh, valid and you haven't gotten some recent comps. And, and we'll uh, I'll show you how that goes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a presentation. I'm going to click on presentation. And again, true with anything in Paragon. As soon as it loads up, eventually, sometime. Let me try this again. Click on CMA, and we're going to create a presentation. As you can see, the presentation wizard, anytime Paragon has a wizard, let me strongly encourage you to utilize it. You will know that the wizard, first of all, it's going to say wizard, but this green arrow in the upper right hand corner it will allow you to go step by step by step and you don't miss anything so i encourage you to uh, use the wizard at any time so we're going to click next and you'll notice on the left hand side it's going to walk down each step so we're going to go to the cma wizard and we are going to create a name for this. So we're just going to have video. We will click the next button and notice on the left hand side, it's going to walk step by step. Now I am here for the property, the, what the property is that I'm going to be doing a CMA on. You'll notice that there's a couple of options. If this property has never been listed, not in this scenario, because I remember I've shown you that I have uh, told you that I've shown the property. So I'm doing a CMA for a buyer. But if you're doing something on new construction, one that's never been listed before, you can create the new subject property. You'll cl uh, click on that and fill in some information, bedrooms, bath, square footage, amenities, and then add that as your subject property. You can load a subject uh, property if you have already created a provisional listing. I'm going to use this. I'm going to use an existing MLS number. So I've randomly chosen a number. You're going to add, enter that number. When you click next or you can click the go, it's going to pull a picture of the property and the address. Just like this. So you can see that the property that I'm going to be doing a CMA on is 201 Tobin Lane in Hazel Green. Loaded the picture that's in the MLS. I'm going to click next and now comes my client. So if I am working with a uh, previous client, I can select one from my client list. I'm going to create a new client. I'm going to think that this is a new buyer. And so I'm going to put in the... is going to be a, um, let me get it. I'm gonna create a buyer. First name, last name is required. Notice that if I'm going to email them, I'm gonna to have to have an email address. It's not required, but most of the time you're gonna be communicating, sending this report via email. So you're gonna need their email. So I'm just gonna, Type in I'm going to choose that as my primary. I'm going to click next. And now what you have done is you've loaded the subject property and you've loaded the uh, client. Click your next. Now you're going to be choosing the comparables. This is the hardest part of a CMA. And if it was easy, you would even have more people selling real estate. 
but it's going to be up to you. I'm always going to defer to your broker. Check with a broker, a mentor, sales uh, manager, whoever you might have access to, and find out how they choose their criteria. I'm going to give a certain criteria that I would use, and you may use it. If not, check with your broker. Your broker may want you to use different criteria. But this is how that I'm going to show you to choose your comparables. We're going to click on Add Comparables, and this search screen is going to come up. There's going to be a couple of things that's a little different. We're going to do a residential property. And I want you to notice right here, it says view subject property. Because it is in the MLS, I can now click on that information. If I forget a little bit about my subject property and I'm trying to pull comps, I can always reference back. It will pull up the property and I can minimize it. And then if I forget again, I can click and it'll bring it back up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be choosing comparables. And when I say comparables, I am talking about properties that are comparable or comparable to the subject property. The subject property is going to be what you are doing your CMA on. You're going to be choosing some comparables, some comparables that you're going to try and determine value. You want it to be as close to equal as you possibly can. Uh, if they are not, if there's no way to get equals, then you're going to have to choose some and adjust accordingly. If you're, um, you're never going to change the value of the subject property, you're either going to add value to your comps or subtract value to make it equal to your subject property. And I'll show you what I mean. So now I'm going to choose the statuses. Again, I'm going to teach three statuses. Check with your broker. They may say you only need one status, you may need two, whatever it may be. But I chose actives, and I didn't choose all actives. I chose actives, I chose pendings, and I chose, chose souls. Now, you have to have souls. That's where your market value comes from. So you always have to have souls. Some people put expired listings in. Some people put canceled listings in just because they either... They withdrew the listing, they canceled the listing, or it expired due to some factor. And so they may put that in. But I always chose these active, pending, and sold. Active meaning that's the competition. Everybody can price it no matter what they want to, but that's the competition. Pending means they've done something right. They haven't closed, but they've done something right to get an accepted offer. And sold properties are going to be exactly that, properties that have closed. And you, your market value, the range that I told you, your market value will be determined by the sold uh, comps that you choose. We're going to go down here to close date. Now, you can choose a close date because you don't want to use anything too old. Um, most appraisers go back six months. So if you're choosing comps over six months, you can either manually put the date in, you can choose a date and put it in from this date to this date, go six months ago, and it would be, uh, this is the eighth month, so it'd be February 22nd, 2022, to, uh, I mean, August 22nd, 2022. Um, you're going to, or you can just go right here, and you'll notice on your date range, you can choose six months, 90 days, 60 days, and go back 24 months. Appraisers use six months in a normal market. If there's been a lot of activity in a certain subdivision or a certain area, they may only go back 90 days to get the most uh, current comps. But in this case, I'm just going to go back six months. And I'm going to start going in and filling some of this information out. Now, again, you heard me say that I want to pull comps as close to my subject property as I can. So what I'm going to be looking for are bedrooms, baths, style. I always use schools. Some people may say you need to use zip codes. Whatever it is, find the criteria that your broker or sales manager tells you, and you're going to be entering it in here. 30,000 properties are too much to search for as far as trying to find comps. So I'm going to go through here. And I'm going to look at age. Now, 
I'm going to look at my uh, my subject property, and I'm going to see that the age of this property is from it's new, never occupied. So I'm not going to pull comps that are 50, 75 years old. They're not comparable. So what I'm going to do is try to pull as many comps as I can that's going to be new, never occupied. So I clicked on that, and it shows me 1,873. I'm going to start putting in information about this property that's going to narrow it down. The property was in Hazel Green, so I'm going to narrow it down to Madison County. I am down to 751. I'm going to continue to put criteria in the subject property. And again, I forgot if this is three or four. So I go back. It is a four bedroom. So I'm going to put as a minimum, this was me, I would put three. You don't want to use two bedrooms as your uh, minimum because two bedrooms to four bedrooms, that's just a little bit too much. But some three bedrooms may have a bonus room, whatever it may be. And I'm going to narrow it down to four bedrooms. I don't want to go to fives. That may could be more square footage. I'm going to look and figure that the baths, most of them are going to have, this is a two and one half. I'm going to stay away from that. And I'm going to look at a couple of things. I'm going to look at square footage. Now, that this shows that it is 2019 as far as square footage. Under the square footage here, I'm going to put a minimum and a maximum. I'm not going to use a thousand square foot home to uh, use, uh, use as a comp for this 2000 square foot home, nor would I use a 4000 square foot home. I'm going to try and stay within a 10% range. So in this case, I'm going to use 1,800 square feet to 2,200 square feet. And you can see that narrows it down greatly. I've seen now that there are 201 homes that have sold in Madison County in the last six months between 1,800 and 2,200 square feet. Again, I'm going to start whittling down. Under the city, we said it was in Hazel Green, so I'm going to type in Hazel Green. And now I'm down to 25. If I felt like 25 was still too much, I would look at possibly putting the elementary school, the high school. If you're in a larger city, you may want to narrow it down that way. Uh, for this case, I'm going to leave it as generic as possible. I've gotten 25 properties that have sold in the last six months that are new construction between 1,800 and 2,200 square feet. I'm going to click search and it's going to bring up all those properties that are meet the criteria. So you see there are three actives and there's multiple solds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look in this subdivision and I'm going to try and pull as many as I can out of that same subdivision. So I forgot what's I'm going to say, and I didn't pay any attention, but I'm going to say that uh, this property was located in Townsend Farms, only because there's a Townsend Place and a Townsend Farm. Uh, let me go ahead and go Townsend Place because I see that the street is there. But I'm going to go ahead and choose these as comparables because these three seem to fit fairly close falls within the parameter. Remember, it was 2019 as far as the square footage. Um, if you don't like being 200 square feet out, you can take these actives out. There were no pendings. Everything else in there has sold. So I'm going to go ahead and randomly pick comps. So again, what you try to do are pick comps. Now, I'm going to give a number. The number of souls that you need to have should be three. If you, if I chose 10, I'm going to get a very wide range and it's not going to give me an accurate value. I'm going to choose the three most like comps to the subject property. Now, I'm going to pretend like these three are. I don't want to choose eight because you're going to get a skewed value. I'm going to go ahead and choose 
no more than three of actives because what's going to do it's going to really uh, cloud the consumer's uh, view now some brokers like to go ahead and type in or choose multiple more than three and if your broker tells you to do that go ahead do that i'm saying what mike sandoval teaches that's what they teach but the fact is whatever works for you is correct and that's what's going to be what your broker said so now i've just chose my comps i've chose three sold properties i'm going to click on add to cma it's going to ask me, do I want to choose all the listings, just the current listing? I'm going to click on selected listings, the ones that I checked as green. When I click select, it's going to bring it up. And now I have, instead of 25, I have the four properties that I am using as comparables. There you are, one active and three souls. I am happy with those properties. If I wanted to go back, I could and choose some, but I'm happy with these. So I'm going to select them all. You can individually either mark each one individually, or you can check this box. It's going to select it all. And I want you to notice right here, this floppy disk, that's going to save your comps. When you click save, you have saved your comps, upper right-hand corner, CMA presentation saved successfully. You're going to, you can go back, remember if I say 30, 60 or 90 days from now and they want to look at the CMA, is it still accurate? You'll come to this part. If you want to choose more comps, you'll be able to, you click on this plus and you can add comparables. If you want to delete, you can select one and there's a trash can, you can delete it. So again, it's going to be up to you. Can I give you the magic potion to select the right comps? And the answer is no. You're going to have to talk to your broker, sales manager, or mentor, go out and look, and you're going to be able to find out. All these are four, two, or four, threes. So they're going to be pretty comparable. I'm going to show you what's next, and those are called adjustments. I'm going to show you with caution because you can over or under adjust the properties and shoot yourself in the foot. You can overcompensate and try to over correct the adjustments and you're going to have a value that's not even close. But I'm going to show you how you can do it if you have to. So I'm happy with this. Again, I'm going to use the next and I've chosen the comparables. Now I am going into the adjustments. I'm going to skip past this automatic because we're not going to have any automatic uh, adjustments made. We're going to click on adjustments and it's going to give me where I can make manual adjustments. And I'm going to show you how. I'm not going to necessarily say this is correct for this CMA, but I'm just going to say this is how you do if you have to make adjustments. Let's say you pulled comp and there is no way that you can go ahead and pull the right number of sold. So you had to either pull some houses that were a little bit higher on square footage, a little bit lower, had different amenities. I'm going to show you how you're going to make the adjustments that way. So we're going to look here. We're going to look at this first comp, and I did this on purpose. It is the same property. So you're going to look and say, hmm, square footage the same, same amount of bedrooms, baths, full bricks, central, new, never occupied, three-car garage, so forth and so on. You are going to accept that and say that is a good comp. I'm going to click, and instead of the green in the upper right-hand corner, that would take me to the next field. I'm going to go to the next comp right here. I'm going to click next comp, and it's going to bring me up to the next comparable that was in my selection. And you can see it's going to be this property. I'm going to scroll up to the top. I'm going to see that it's sold. And now I'm going to be looking at everything that's equal. Now I see right here that the square footage is very comparable. I see here that everything's pretty much the same, the same number of rooms, bedrooms, baths. This one does not have a, oh, let's see. This one had two full baths. It did not have an extra, the three-quarter bath. 
So let's say that you've determined there is a certain amount of value to that extra bath. And I'm going to use an arbitrary number. If this one, your comp is superior to your subject, meaning the property that you're doing the CMA on, that is your subject. You pulled your comparables and this one is superior. What you're going to do is subtract from that comp to bring it equal to your subject property. So this one has an extra bath. And I'm going to make up an arbitrary number that says an extra bath has been determined that it is going to be worth $5,000 more. So if a house has an extra bath, it has been determined that it has $5,000 more of value. Nothing says that that's accurate in every subdivision. I'm making this up. You're going to have to talk to your broker or sales manager, somebody with experience to get what these dollars are. And not every CMA is going to need to be adjusted. But for teaching purposes, I'm going to adjust this. I said that it was $5,000 more to have an extra bath. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my comparable down to my subject. I don't ever adjust the subject. I bring my comps either down to or up to. In this case, it's superior. I'm going to bring it down. So I'm going to subtract $5,000 to make things all equal. Now, what you see on the adjusted price here, it says $375. When I subtract that $5,000, you immediately see that now the adjusted value is $295, 275 so again, I subtracted from the superior and brought it down to the level of the subject property. So I'm going to go through here. And if there were anything else that needed to be adjusted, I would. Nothing says it has to be. But in this case, I'm going to say this is what it is, has been done. I'm happy with this. And instead of going here to the green next, I go here, the red next comp, and I'm going to pull up the next comp that I have chosen to be in my CMA. I'm going to go through and do the same thing over and over and over again. Square footage is the same. All things being the same. Same thing here on this three quarter bath. I've determined that it's $5,000. I'm going to subtract $5,000. Notice the value goes from 303700 to 298700 $5,000 difference. We're going to go through. This is a two-car garage. Notice that the subject property has a three-car garage. In essence, the subject is superior. The comp is inferior. So remember, I told you that I'm going to increase the comp if it's inferior decrease it if it is superior. In this case, there's one less car. And we have determined that that extra bay is worth $5,000. So instead of subtracting $5,000, I'm going to add $5,000 to the value. When I do that, notice the adjusted price goes back to $303,700. You will do this on each one of your subject properties. Again, let me caution you, not every subject property needs to be adjusted. I am just showing you how to adjust. So we go to the last comp and we will do the same thing. We will look, compare everything. If it needs to be, the, the comp needs to be brought up, we will add. If it needs to be brought down, we will subtract a certain dollar figure. And you do that with each one of your comps. Again, let me caution you, it doesn't have to be done. And if you do, just think, if you go ahead and start, if there's a 100 square foot difference and you start subtracting $30,000 for 100 square feet or whatever it may be, just know that there could be, you could adjust yourself completely out of a, an accurate value. Use the adjustments with caution. I have to show you how to adjust, but just use it with caution. In this case, I've gone through each one of my comps. I'm going to now click the green next. And what I have done is I've already created my CMA. I pulled my subject property, added my client, chose my comps, and I've adjusted. Now I'm getting into the fun part of just dressing it up, choosing what's going to be in it, what's not. So I'm going to choose the theme. You can choose any one of these different covers. 
whatever you like, that's what you choose. You click your green next, and it's going to give you your footers. Now, remember, I told you to go to your preference wizard. When you went to your preference wizard, you uploaded your picture and your company logo. This is not the time to do it. You can, but this is not the time to do it. Hopefully, you've gone ahead and you have typed in everything. If you wanted something that says Mike Sandoval is a household name or something like that, you can type that in the text. You click next, check with your broker, but most of them want you to put this disclaimer here. Information deemed reliable, but not guaranteed. And it gives a disclaimer saying that no representation is guaranteed by the seller and it's up to the buyer to go ahead and verify all this information. Your hold harmless. But check with your broker, see if they wanna use it. You click next. And now you're going to choose the components that's going to make up your CMA. You're going to click on the cover page. If you want a cover letter, you've gone in through your preference wizard and you've typed in a cover letter that says, hi, thank you for allowing me to do this, yada, 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 blah, 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 blah. If you want that letter to go, you will select it. If you don't want it to appear, you will unselect it. If you have a resume and you've uploaded it or you've got it into your um, description, you put it in there. If you don't, uncheck it and it won't. Do that for each one of these. And you've gone ahead and chosen it ahead of time through your preference wizard. Now you can tweak it. You can, you can make some changes on the fly. But the one thing I want you to notice here, you will always, regardless of what pages you've chose for your comparable uh, for your CMA, you will click on comparative price analysis. When you click on that, it's going to bring you to a screen that gives you pricing. Now, it's going to give you the option to use the low price of the comps, the high price of the comps. You can use the average price and you can use the median price. Whatever you want to use, that's what you can use. Now, you can look at these numbers and they say that they're anywhere from 295 to 304. Or, five, uh, three, or 312, actually. And there's a high, but you can look and you see that the average is somewhere uh, 304 and the low is that. You could see how it put in the average price if you wanted to use a range. And let's say that I wanted to go ahead and use a range that said from 299 to 309. Because again, I'm going to choose a range. If I've done my study and say, yeah, these numbers, but this is the market's inflated, deflated, it's slow, it's hot, whatever it may be, you can come up with your own price range. And this is where you would put it. If you feel that all, all your comps say 304,115, then use the average. If it said 304,300, you could use the median price and you see it will change it. What I'm going to do is give me that range. I'm going to go from 299, 9. And I'm going to go to 3099. And that is going to be my price range. Now, you will see at the bottom, you have the option of using some AVMs or some um, automated valuation model. Um, it's your option. If you wanted to, sometimes Black Knight or RPR or Zillow has an estimate. If it helps you, you could select them here at this time. There is no value here, so you can't select. But if there is, go ahead, you can choose it, and it would add that value if it reinforces. So again, use that with caution. You're going to have to look at it. The seller's net sheet, you can add in here and type in those numbers manually if you wanted to here, the low price, high price. If you want to do that, great. If you don't, exclude it from your CMA. We're going to pretend like it will exclude from our CMA. We are going to look at everything here. Ah, <laughs> great. Technology says that now what I'm going to do is remember the page changed. I'm going to go to CMA. And remember, I told you that 
once you save that video, it's, I mean, save that CMA, it's going to allow you to pull it up at another time. So I click on it and I can go through and change everything or anything on this. I wanted to choose comparables, but to try and save face, I'm going to go ahead and go to the page set, uh, presentation and tell you that if you want to select a, a, a page to appear, check it. If you don't, uncheck it and go through here. You can go ahead and type in, look at these pages, see if they're going to help your CMA. Also here where it says upload document, let's say that you have created a seller's checklist and it's in a PDF. You can click on upload and add it to your presentation if you want. So again, you've selected the pages that you want to show in your CMA. When you click on view presentation, it's going to give you the option. It's going to click start. It's going to tell you that it's assembling your components and then it's creating your presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how you do a CMA. Now, again, it's assembling this, it's converting it to a PDF, and here it is. You'll notice a couple of things. You can print this. You also have the option to email this. Please do neither until you look it over to see how it is. And you will see this is how it's going to look. It's not hard, and you've created a CMA. Now, remember, it's going to take a little bit of work, and these CMAs that people say, just click, click, boom, use this one because it's easier. Easier doesn't mean more accurate, and you're helping someone with the single largest financial investment that they're ever going to make in their life. You need to take some time to study this out. Remember how to choose your comparables. Use a certain range. If you are in a rural area or an area of slow sales, you may have to go outside that range, outside a mile, outside of school, uh, whatever it may be. You may have to go back further than six months, but talk to your broker and find out. Pull comps that are as close to your subject. If they are not, adjust accordingly. Then you will walk through the steps. You will choose the pages that you want. You'll create it. And then you have delivery methods of either emailing it you can save it for future references, or you can print it and carry it with you. I hope that you found this video helpful. Uh, again, uh, if there's any questions, please feel free to reach out to the MLS uh, department. They will be glad to help you. Thank you.